what up friends? Hope you're all well. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're talking about a strong Imperial Stout. Now, we ain't gonna lie to you, this is not the original intro. We had something different planned out. I'll put a photo on the screen so you can see how it was meant to be. But given current situations, thoughts with Ukraine, we obviously couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so here's another intro. It's a bit odd that we've already tasted the beer that we're now going to be yeah. introducing. But, um, yeah, anyway. Can't be helped. Over, over to the brains of the operation. Yeah, thank you, Timothy. So it's a, um, it's a 13, it turned out to be a 13% Imperial Stout. Um, it didn't, the, the, the actual brew day didn't quite go to plan. Um, the... It was quite stressful, actually, I yeah. seem to remember. Yeah, it was, it was. It was a, I had to do a double mash, basically, which created a few issues. I was hoping I could squeeze it all in there. And when I had... This is the mash done here, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Nice and shiny, ready for tomorrow. Like your head. <laughs> um, My head's not ready for tomorrow. So, <laughs> so I poured in half of the malt and half of the, uh, the mash water I needed and realised that I was well over um, half of the total volume of the mash tun. So um, I decided that I, I therefore needed to do a double mash. So it added an extra sort of for the couple first hours. time for you, wasn't it? Yeah, first time. first time doing a double mash. Yeah, definitely. Um, if I was going to do it again with this system, I would just do. I mean, it turned out to be a great beer. Yeah, yeah, so, um, and that's actually what we can say that because obviously we tasted it, and we know how it's going to go. Yeah. We're not just shooting blind at the moment. It is a fantastic beer, oh, so it right. is worth watching. Where's your best one yet, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. And yeah. the beer is called. Uh, the beer is called Narkill. No, so let's, let's put a snippet of that up on the, on, on the screen yeah, so they can see what that, that's all about. For those that don't know, which are probably 99.9% .9 of you, um, Narkil was banned from the film Haggard. Terrible film, but um, a bit of a cult classic following. Uh, you've never seen it, have you? No, so I'm not going, going to. It. It's good. No, I've seen the footage. I'll it's let you guys be the judge of that. It's a classic. <laughs> well, is it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I had to do a double mash, which extended the brew day by about two hours. So I probably finished brewing at about, what was it, half two? Yeah, it was really late. It was a, it was yeah. a long one. Plus, we were also drinking very high ABV stouts throughout. Yeah. We, it's a tasting video, which we're going to do separately, which was eight stouts yeah. in effectively eight minutes. But it wasn't. It was over the course of the evening. We had yeah. some stouts up to 18.5%. So, yeah, yeah. to be honest, we were gradually getting pissed while we were brewing. Which doesn't help when you've got a complicated brew. <laughs> but that's the dream, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Um, other issues were I kept on getting a stuck mash. Um, it's such a huge grain bill. I mean, the grain bill itself was, for the 40 litre batch, it was 35 kilos of grain. Um, so yeah, 20 litres, which is fairly standard, 20 litre batch, 17 and a half kilos, so pretty massive. Um, because it was such a huge grain bill and there was some oats in there, I, I, I guess, I kept on getting a stuck mash. Uh, I now have loads and loads of rice hulls, which I'm hoping will help out with that in future. I, keep, I kept on saying I was going to use them, yeah, never yeah. did, but I finally have them. So on the, on the next brew, especially a sort of oaty brew, I'm going to be using rice hulls. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did a couple of different flavour additions, didn't we? Because we had 40 litres to play with. Um, I did 20 litres of that went straight into a, uh, a, a six and a half litre carboy. Sorry, six and a half gallon carboy, uh, which had a load of oak chips, which I'd, I'd soaked in bourbon for a, for a few months. Um, and that's what you've got on nitro tap at the moment, isn't it? Nitro tap. And that is a amazing bit. Hey, cheers. Thank you. Cheers, son. As you'll see in a minute. Nicest thing he's ever said about me. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get stuck into the footage, roll on film. To reiterate, I had to double mash in my 80 litre tonne, so this grain bill was divided by two. Strike water for each mash was 35 litres at 72.5 degrees centigrade, followed by a 12 litre sparge. I cold steeped the carafe for 24 hours prior to the brew day as I wanted to get as much colour as possible without imparting any extra bitterness. This was essentially tied in a grain bag and left to sit in 6 litres of cold water overnight for the full 40 litre batch. I Vorloft for 10 minutes of the mash, allowing all of the larger grain particles to settle on top of the grain bed, prior to switching to the recirc manifold for the remainder of the mash. So we've reached our pre-boil volume of 26 litres. Uh, next up, all we've got to do now is one whole mash. I'm going to mash all over again. So we're going to get to our total pre-boil volume, 52 litres for the 40 litre batch volume that I'm shooting for. Stay tuned. 
Now, as you can see, we're transferring to the kettle. It's a boil, that is. <laughs> like that. Both American hops. The Chinook was a first wort hop, which means you add it to the kettle as soon as the liquid enters the boil kettle. Happy with that? Yeah, very happy, Timothy. Yeah? Sure. 19 degrees, yeah, 19.8 degrees. Nice. Transferring to the old conical fermenter. Treat, isn't it? Yeah, it's it. Greetings friends, so it's almost, well it's just a little bit over three weeks since brew day uh, and it's time to rack it um, for secondary fermentation and I'm also going to um, transfer four litres to, to bottles so hopefully it'll be ready in time for Christmas. 12 weeks prior to the brew day, I soaked 80 grams of oak chips in 200 millilitres of bourbon. I then transferred 20 litres of the total 40 litre batch directly onto the oak chips, including the bourbon, in a glass carboy for secondary fermentation. I then transferred it to keg, and after two weeks at 20 degrees, I carbonated it with CO2 for one week, prior to serving it from our new nitro tap. Oh yeah, I love that colour. Mm. You meant to let it sit? I'm pretty sure my pour was better. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> All right. I'm expecting that. Look at that. It's great, isn't that? I'll that. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Happy it, with that. It smells, so bear in mind that the barrel of Speedway Stout is our number one. It smells a lot like that mm. one. That's what it reminds me of as well. Which is only a good thing. Yeah, that? Just leave, yeah, just leave it for a couple of minutes and then it'll... Uh... Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's a full stout there. So 30% imperial stout, barrel aged with bourbon oak chips. Yep, that's the one. Let's get in. Should do it. That is Cheers, our kid. That is full. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers everyone. guys. It's good, isn't it? It's pretty good. That is good. It's pretty damn good. I'm gonna go and say it. That's the best beer I brewed. That's the that's the winner ever. Yeah. I think that's incredible. The bar exactly how we got fermenting at the moment. The what? Yeah, yeah. Mm. That is, um, that's really, really yeah, good. Very happy with that. Um, yeah, it's it's, it's know, a lot like tree cool molasses, isn't it? It's rich um, fruit. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, everything I wanted to be. It's it's better than I imagined it could be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In my opinion, well I'm really happy with that. That's brilliant. And then you can smell the oak. I mean, I guess because the the the, the nitro, it's just aerate. You know, mm. it's just it's just. I guess forcing that aromatic release. Yeah, yeah. But you can smell it in the throughout your boozer, can't you? It's yeah. Just, well, yeah. the the nitro tap when it forces it through the little holes in the tap, it, it apparently knocks out the CO two. Yeah. Um, so I was slightly worried I had overcarbonated it, but it seems to be pouring really nicely. I was I was worried I was just going to get a whole load of foam and have really? to leave it for three hours to. <laughs> you cannot have too many of them. No. <laughs> you feel really. it, don't you? You just feel that booze. Yeah. Um, it's lovely. Really smooth. Yeah, that's great. That's that's a wrap on our uh, on, on well our stroke your imperial stout brew. <clears throat> All the details in the description as usual for, uh, for you to um, to take a look at and hopefully uh, to, to brew one yourself if you feel that way inclined. If you want to take on a a real stout, <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for viewing. You guys take care. See you soon.